Yeah, we 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 live now. We live now. We live. We lit. Big All up. right, I'll be with you guys. Big up, in... big up, big up, uh, bro, Callum from Titans TV for that for that little for that little intro. We live, baby. Big up, Callum. I big up the whole family who tuned back on the live show. Thank you, thank you for um for being with us on the previous debate with uh, our friend Yakia. God bless him, Yakia. So yeah, we're back, looking fresh again. Got a new T-shirt. Ready to do the final part for, of Paperboy's massive presentation on deconstructing Mohammed, peace be upon him, and the Quran. I hope everybody's well. Uh, big up Revelation, Mikey, Jesus was an atom to <laughs> big up everybody on on, uh, on the live chat. IQ, Gregorian, um, P.S. Taylor, what's up, anybody? Snow Leopard, what's up, bro? Daniel Jennings, God bless you, IQ, bro. Blessings to the whole family tuning in. Uh, sis Marion, yeah, hello, sis. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Ultimate Truth. <laughs> Ultimate Truth is also in the house. And also Okami Primo. What's happening, buddy? I hope the family is well. I hope the sound is coming, coming clear. And um, we just sat, buddy. Yeah, all good. Happy to see the family. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting to do a, a like two live live shows or live streams uh, on the same day, but <clears throat> um, yeah, it, it is what it is. So happy to see you guys back back on on the channel. Cool. So we're gonna wait for Paperboy um, to come back on, and so yeah, he's going to finalize the presentation on on the on the topic at hand and. Um, yeah, obviously, I hope the, the family has obviously found these last two, last three presentations actually edifying, informative, and hopefully it will have encouraged you to go and research uh, the points that were made, so that you can make your your mind up about this particular subject. Also, uh, our friend Mohammed had the courtesy to jump on live, uh, jump on the live show yesterday, which um, we're obviously very happy because. We've been asking the Dawa channels to jump on, uh, especially the likes of Ijaz and, and Hamza and, and all those guys. And unfortunately, obviously, they, uh, due to the heavy schedule, they weren't able to, to join us. So, God willing, someone from their team will jump on board and to refute the points that are going to be presented in this final um, final part for of this presentation. Rob Silla. God bless hey, you, brother. What's up, guys? God bless. <laughs> How are you? What's How up? Are you? What's up? I'm hey, all Rob. good in the hood. Happy, happy yeah. to be back again. Yes, um, sir. What's up? I was, uh, Rob, I was supposed to upload your little segment um, where you debated uh, our Muslim friend yesterday. Um, but I, has, I was really tied up uh, today, so which means that I will upload a little segment or after this live stream, and then you can by all means uh, download it on your channel and put it up on your channel if, if you wish. Cool, no cool, problem, cool. Uh, Rob. So, Rob, yeah, any comments on what's been happening so far? Yeah, uh, your guys are doing amazing, man. You're bringing down the hammer on the prophet of Islam uh, today. What's happening, uh, people boy? Keep doing, keep doing what you do, bro. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, you know, get these Abduls busted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, seems that not many Muslims are can actually handle the truth. So, uh, I want to add something on uh, the earlier uh, ayah that you mentioned, chapter thirty-three, ayah fifty. If that's yeah. okay. Cool. Uh, if we go to Tafsir al Qurtubi for chapter thirty-three, ayah fifty. Chapter thirty-three, ayah fifty. Tafsir al Qurtubi, one of the biggest old school scholars of Islam. If we go through his uh, tafsir for this ayah, we can find that Muhammad had 16 privileges. 16, not one, not two, but 16. Uh, actually, if you uh, go through um, some uh, of the privileges, yeah, if, uh, if you go through some privileges, uh, for example, uh, let's say Muhammad attacks a tribe, let's say a Jewish tribe. The big screen TV goes to Muhammad. That's one of the, basically one of the privileges, right? Fifth of the booty will go to the prophet of Islam. Let me go to the 10th one. The 10th one, Japanese, and let me, um, let me read the Arabic first, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, paper boy. Japanese, 
you have a yeah. link we can put yeah. on the screen? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, please, unfortunately, please. it's only in Arabic. Do you know Arabic? My oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll just scroll down. <laughs> I do. Here. Yeah. So <laughs> well, maybe uh, before the users they want to read it as well, like we can just pull it on. Yeah. And... Let's see awesome. if I can get it. No problem. Sure. Even well, if you say okay. the reference, Rob, people can look it up in English. Yeah. Um, Have you? Wait. Let, let me. I. You. You said thirty-three forty, right? No, fifty. Thirty-three fifty. The one that ah, okay. our brother Paperboy just mentioned uh, earlier. Maybe you can go okay. back. Uh, uh, a screen back, uh, Paperboy. For, so that people back. can see it on the screen, right? All right, should, should I pull the presentation? Okay, cool, let me pull yeah, the presentation. Yeah, okay. so it, it maybe talks easier for the people who are watching. Um, I, I, will, I will look up uh, the link uh, and I will share it, okay, later. But uh, let me this go okay. to, the, to the 10th uh, privilege. So there are 16 privileges. If Muhammad attacks uh, a tribe, the, the biggest booty goes to Muhammad. So let's say the big screen TV goes to Muhammad. But the 10th one, and that's the most damaging one, Al-Ashir, the 10th, if waqa'a basarahu ala imra'a wajib ala zawjiha talaquha wa halla lahu nikahuha. Translation, if Muhammad looks upon a married woman, a married Muslim woman, her husband must immediately divorce her and hand her over to Muhammad so Muhammad can do nikah to her. You know what the word nikah means, right? It doesn't mean marriage. So imagine you are walking on the street of Mecca and Muhammad sees your wife. You're a Muslim man. Muhammad flirts with your wife. He falls in love with, with your wife. You have to divorce her and give her to, over to Muhammad. Is this a man of God, guys? Or is this Rob, nothing but a... Rob, yeah. can I just ask, the Arabic word within this context for looks upon... Yeah. Does it mean look with lust, or does it just mean glance, look, um, observe? Like no, it's, it's implicit in the text yeah. that it yeah. means like well, check a man. Let me think. let me just translate exactly what it said. If if Muhammad looks lustful, if he looks ah. at a woman, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, he thinks that it's her sister, she's like his right. sister or his aunt or uh, his, uh, you know, he's, yeah. he's looking yeah. at her um, that he falls in love with her. He wants to have, w wants to have her in her bed, in his bed, right? Jiggy, jiggy. So, yeah. okay, so the Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him wants to have, mm. so basically, if he looks at a woman and he likes yeah. the woman, regardless if she's married or not, yeah. and if he wants to do jiggy, jiggy, it would, yes. it would just have that get woman. It, get it, getting it's, jiggy with it, right? Like uh, uh, Michael, my, D. Mike Larry would have said it, right? <laughs> no, um, so hold on. So hold on. So he's looking yeah. with the lust and therefore yeah. is an adulterer in his heart, according to Christ. Exactly. And then he wants to commit actual adultery, yeah. like, or not even that. He wants the husband to divorce her just in order for him to mutter her off. Or I don't even know, like, just get a bit and then let her carry on walking because then she can go back to the first husband no 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 this is not yeah. about going back this is this is no, but I'm saying this is dowry, right? and if he doesn't want to marry them if yeah. he only wants to know them intimately why not leave them married and bring a revelation that says i can just have a go when i feel like it and you can have a back mate that kind of thing yeah, well, the, it's Islam, right? Muhammad can do whatever he wants. There is no re limitation for Muhammad. And this actually uh, should ring a bell uh, because if we go to the story, uh, let's say, of King David, God did not say to Muhammad, it's okay, right? Or, or to, to King David, it's okay, you can have her. No, God okay. punishes King David. But here we see that Allah says to Muhammad, go ahead, you can have the wife of your adopted son because Muhammad doesn't need her any, uh, her, his, his son doesn't need her anymore. So you, it's okay, take her for yourself. It's so, almost as if you're implying, Rob, I don't yeah. mean to put words in your mouth, but it's almost as if you don't believe that Muhammad was in touch with God. Is that is that all right? Like kind of suggestion? What yeah, you're saying? It, it, it he seems, could have been that, making stuff up that suited him. Yeah, Muslims always claim that uh, Allah and God of the Old Testament are the same God. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But God of, the, uh, of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob it's an insult for him for such a so-called prophet to act in this kind of behavior. So God, instead of uh, Allah, instead of punishing Muhammad, like God of the Holy Bible punishing King David and King Solomon, he see, yeah. we see here that Allah is condoning what Muhammad is saying and actually he's yeah. helping him instead of punishing him. 
Mm. So how can wow. this be the same God? How can Muslims even the same dare God to that claim? said one man and one woman become one flesh, not four women, one man, and then a different man if they all go off and come back again after sleeping with a net. I don't remember those verses. Maybe those are the corrupted parts of the Bible. Maybe they were removed illegally. Yeah. Like, Maybe we, yeah. we should ask God why he didn't create Adam and Eve number one, two, three, and four. Like in there is that. Yeah. <laughs> it would have I mean they'd have needed a whole heap of apples to start yeah. with. I mean, I don't know. There was. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. 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 So it the seems as if yeah. yeah, it seems as if Muslims want to tell us by uh giving us these tafsirs for chapter 33, ayah 50, they actually want to prove to us that Muhammad's Allah is no one else but Satan and Muhammad is the agent of Satan because it's an insult to God for a man to commit adultery with someone else's wife, stealing someone else's wife. I mean, Jesus says, if you look, uh, you know, uh, with your own eyes to someone's wife, you already committed uh, adultery in your heart, right? Yeah. But what about Islam? We see that in Islam, it's the opposite. And that's let, that, that, let that which God has joined together, let no man tear asunder, except some dude who's coming mm -hmm. shortly, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So you can see Muslims, Muslims, all of you guys that claim that we worship the same God, that the prophets are all the same. You can see very clearly that's not the case. If you and remember if the shake in the park, like the and the, do you remember that? Ah, he admitted the that. Sh yeah. Shaky shake. Yeah, yeah, of course. Shaky shake already admitted this. And um, the big guy. Yeah, the big guy. He admitted this. But I think he, he sort of backed down afterwards. He, uh, he sort of like re retracted yeah. his, his position because he knew that it was very damaging to, to his mm. religion. And unfortunately, we don't see no Muslims coming on board. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to just raise a quick point. I was listening only briefly because I'm buried under some work that I have to do at the moment. But what I was thinking is that the Aisha's implication, I think she was very clever in the way that she worded her statement about how lucky, supposedly, Mohammed was but also the fact that the Quran itself declares him over and over and over again to be nothing but a warner, merely a warner, just a warner. Like, there are so many ways that you can say and nothing else, like just or only a warner. So even the prophethood, even the being able to claim certain privileges, why would God send a mere warner, like nothing other than that, to be able to enjoy other people's wives, to be able to take the massive share of theft because mm. thou shalt not steal is still a relevant verse whether you're under the old or new covenant like and yeah if if Allah is uh, sorry if Muhammad is claiming that Jibril told him that Allah told Jibril that uh, he's entitled to this share of it's theft basically the murder like he condoned murder somebody was strangled he said there was no blood money due and it was a Jew actually so there are times when he literally goes against what Yahweh has ordained to be correct um, in his position as merely a warner. So mm -hmm. I guess I'd like someone to explain that to me, but they've been trying for years and I don't see it. Yeah, guys, if, if I want to add uh, on top of what we uh, said earlier about chapter 33, ayah 50, uh, you know, when uh, Muhammad, you know, took the wife of his adopted son, Zayd ibn Muhammad, at that time uh, Zayd was called Zayn ibn Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad, you know, when he stole, uh, when he stole his wife, uh, the people, you know, even at that time, I mean, we're talking about 1400 years ago, even people at that time, uh, they thought, hey, this, this cannot be happening, this is not normal, you just stole uh, basically your daughter-in-law you are sleeping around with your daughter-in-law so people came to complain to him and what Allah what does Allah do Allah again saving Muhammad's peepee sending down the ayah and mm. abolishes what abolishes adoption suddenly then Zayd ibn Muhammad goes back with it and takes his he has to take his La old last name, right? So it's but Rob, Rob, I see often, Muhammad. yeah, Rob on YouTube. I often see adverts for Muslim like fostering or adoption agencies or telling me how many orphans there are, and then I wonder Allah's um all knowingness when he 
um, you know, in order to protect Mohammed, got rid of adoption because then there's all these orphans that unfortunately, like decent Muslim households, can't adopt them. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, yeah. can you imagine, guys? Can you imagine and try try to think about it? How many poor orphans there are because of Muhammad's? Sorry to say, guys, I'm not trying to, you know, because of Muhammad's uh, male part. Allah wants to save Muhammad's male part. Because of that, all these children cannot be adopted anymore in, uh, into Islam. They can, right? they can maybe Muslims. be married off if they're female, Rob. So yeah. that's all. Can you imagine, guys, try not to cry for these poor children that cannot be adopted because of Muhammad's male part, to say Muhammad's male part. Yes, I mean, I mean it's wow, saddening. Wow, it's wow. saddening. Yeah. Very sad. Uh, very yeah. sad, especially especially coming from a man who claims to be the best example to mankind. Yeah, uh, it's very very sad. Uh, yeah, but, they but, yeah, my friend. Not only that. I mean, uh, can you imagine how many uh, uh, Muslim families? Uh, let's say you are a husband, a Muslim husband, and a, and a, and a Muslim uh, wife. You cannot get children. In, in a natural way, but you want to have a child. That means because of Muhammad's my male part, now you are not allowed as a Muslim to adopt a child. Can you imagine how many poor families? Children are a blessing of God. That's yeah. like quite clear. Like yeah. all life is precious to God. So yeah. I don't think that God would decide uh, all these children are going to be homeless. But I've just seen the comment. Is that what you were about to talk about, JC? Dale Lee's yeah. comment. Can Dennis I answer comment, that, exactly. please? I like, uh, yeah, you can answer that, and then if Rob yes. would like to uh, follow up with his answer, yeah, and then maybe sure. maybe if you like to chime in, then that'd be All right, cool. so, so what I see from the question, without going to the Bible verse, is that God, where God says he won't punish the innocent. So that's self-explanatory, they're innocent. The crimes of the fathers are the crimes of the fathers. God decides how many generations or not. God is all-knowing, as Allah claims to be. So... If Allah were to say, for example, I will, uh, you know, make Christians superior until the day of judgment, I will do this without any explanation. That's all fine if it's God. So God makes the rules up. But the fact that the word is innocent is that God is completely just. God is completely merciful where he chooses to exert that mercy. So a just uh, human judge would not punish the innocent for their associations. So that's the answer to that bit. And why did Yahweh punish an innocent fetus and women, David's wives? So again, God is in control of everything apart from the verse which tells us that actually Satan has some control and dominion on the earth. God's authority is supreme. David is um, on the path to greatness, as it were. He is becoming the man that God destines him to be. And therefore, if uh, God, the same with Job. If God decides that a punishment will be exacted, um, we're unaware, I guess, of God's overarching plan for anybody. So we are to remain faithful to his word and his decisions are final. There is no like court of appeal when it comes to God. So I would say that David's wives were born into sin also. I don't know what their private lives were. Uh, the fetus, the soul belongs to God. Everybody's soul belongs to God. If he calls it home, he calls it home. I'm sure the fetus wasn't punished. If you if you mean punishment by not living in a fallen, sinful world with a heart that's desperately wicked, I guess yes. But but it's not, you know, it's not the same as abortion, for example. So that's my answer for Dale. God bless yes, you, Dale. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, God bless you, Dale. Um he's, yeah, he Dale is, is um he's been following Soccer Fields for a long time and and um yeah, yeah he always in has some interactions, yeah, he always has questions. Yeah. And uh, who would like to answer this next? This question. Before we... I, I just want to say that even with that, with that incident, we see um, David said he will see his son in heaven again. He so the, see the child in heaven. So we, David was a prophet. He was inspired. So we know that soul went to heaven. But I'm going to say you, when Del Lee says something, we like to get him busted. So uh, if you can put this on the screen. JC, yep, I'm just clicking on the uh, the link. Hold on a second. Let me share the screen right now. So bear with me. Um, okay, cool. Let's share the screen. 
because uh, obviously Dale has an issue with children dying. So we go to. Um, are you able to zoom in? That's the biggest. That's it. no. That's it. That's, we'll take that's, that's, your that's, word for it. Okay. So this is the hadith from uh, Muslim Sahih, one of the authentic. Uh, Sunni books and it says Aisha the mother of the believers reported that a child died and I said there is happiness for this child who is a bird from amongst the birds of paradise thereupon Allah's messenger said don't you know that Allah created the paradise and he created the hell he then and then he created the den the dwellers for this paradise and the, de the denizens for this hell so here basically in this hadith and we have a which is Saki, yeah. first of all, Saki Muslim 2662B, book 46, Hadith 46. So here we see the story where the child is, uh, let me just give the other one, I'll read the other one that goes with this. So it says, Aisha, the mother of believers, said that, said that Allah's messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of the Ansar. And the Ansar were like the friends of the Muslim. They were like really good Muslims or whatever. So it says, Allah's messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for it committed no sin, nor has he reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, per adventure, it may be otherwise, because God created for paradise those who are fit for it, while they were yet in their father's loins, and he created for hell those who are to go to hell. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. In so, his, in his backbone, I think that means to say. Hell, Allah has no problem of creating children for hell. So this child was a ch an innocent child that died, and Aisha thought because children are innocent, this child must go to hell. But the prophet said, this is not the case. Allah has created people for hell straight away. So how do you feel that Allah has allowed a young innocent child to go to hell? Exactly. Uh, Paperboy, is it okay if I can add something to what Dali Lee said? Yeah. Yeah, go, uh, go ahead. Go uh, ahead, brother. Uh, I sent the link uh, to, uh, to the chat. If you can uh, show it on the screen, brother, the last link that I mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah, baby. Bear with yeah, me. the one that where I said I want to bring this one in the mix. Into yeah, the mix. yeah, I got okay. I've it, show that cool. show that one on the screen, please. Uh, let me let me get him busted and let me get his prophet busted. Watch, and he's going to and I'm going to make him say that he regretted what he uh, said earlier uh, in the chat. Why? Because now he's going to throw his own prophet under the bus. Watch. According to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, let's say chapter 35, 18, it says, any translation, I don't care, and no burdened soul can bear another's, bur another's burden. So according to the Quran, in this ayah, no one can bear the burden of another soul, right? Even in Islam, even if you're a Muslim. But, and here comes the problem, if you, if you can uh, make that hadith bigger so that people can watch it. According to Muhammad, from a Sahih Hadith, a Sahih Muslim, Messenger of Allah said, on the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say, this is your ransom from hellfire. Did you catch it, guys? Here, Muhammad spanked his own Allah, contradicted his, the Quran of Allah, and showing that uh, for every Muslim, his sins, they were going, Allah will take a Jew and a Christian and he will put the sins of the Muslims on the shoulders of the Jews and the Christians. There you go. Thank you for mentioning this. By saying that, now you just spanked your prophet and we'll see how Delhi Lee will, is going to jump around this disaster that he just created for, it, for his own prophet. Also, Rob, there's another, okay. I think it's Surah 6. I'm just going off the top of my head where it says that you will take your own sins plus the sins of those you have led astray. So therefore you will wow. carry the burden of another as a Muslim. And that also contradicts the preceding ayah that you spoke of. 
Yeah. And, and do you see now what Dalili is saying? That hadith is rejected, <laughs> brother, but it's Sahih Muslim, brother. You say Sahih it's the Quran. Quran brother. I just brother. pointed the Quran, Rob. The Quran yeah. is not yeah. uh, rejected. The Quran <laughs> is accepted. So. Guys, you know, I, I, I am waiting. I'm waiting for the day that the Muslim will say we will reject the Quran. Not only Sahih Muslim and Sahih. Bukhari, like, like the gentleman yesterday, he rejected Sahih Bukhari. Muslims, you know, as if we continue doing what we do, there will be a day that Muslims will say, this ayah is da'if, brother. But they do. They come wow. to Christ regularly. Yeah. Exactly. So they have to maybe maintain some anonymity <laughs> for a little while. Imagine, why is it called Sahih Muslim, but if uh, you can still reject it? It's Sahih. It only means can... Sahih if it yeah. agrees with the Muslim's point of view in that particular <laughs> argument. Basically, can you put the link I've sent just so we can confirm the daily? Yeah, cool. So let's uh, uh, cool. Let me put this, put the oh, reference on well this screen. The okay, cool. So it's coming up now. Is it, it's in this one. Okay. Uh, sorry. But let me let me share it. Well, maybe Dale Lee may have missed the beginning of the show. So here we have a fatwa from the big sheikhs in Saudi Arabia. One, uh, you know, these guys have their really long beards. So someone asked them, should every Muslim believe in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim? Are there any weak or fabricated hadith in the two sahihs? So they said, as for the prophetic sunnah, which explains the Quran, Allah has made numerous great scholars to safeguard it. These servants spared no effort to protect the record of the sunnah of the prophet. For example, Imam Bukhari, Ibn Masur recorded the book of in the book of Al Sayyah by Al Zahabi was ace. He was a sign of a divine creation in his insight and knowledge. It says. Uh, he was also much superior to other scholars as men superior to women. He is one of Allah's miracles, working, walking on earth. I have never seen on earth a more learned in the prophetic hadith, nor better in memorizing than it, than Muhammad ibn Ishmael al-Bukhari. And they say, Muslim is second to only Bukhari. And then they say, uh, the Muslim... So, also book of the Sahih Muslim occupies the second place of al-Bukhari. Both books were received with full acceptance by the Muslim Ummah due to meeting all the conditions of the highest degree for a sound hadith. Only a straying innovator would contest anything of either book. So according to the big scholars in Saudi Arabia, Dale Lee is an innovator. Oh. By the way, it was Quran 1625. I just quoted it in the back chat, if anyone wants to look. Daily, um, I think Daily has another comment for the family. Christians don't understand that just like the Talmud and Hadith, anything that contradicts the Quran and Old Testament is to be rejected, like Talmud exactly. and sex exactly. with a three-year-old. Exactly, JC said they have to reject the Quran because the Quran, Quran contradicts the Quran. 1625 contradicts the verse that Rob bought in the first place. So if you, you can either carry the sin or you can't carry the sin. There's no two ways about it, the burden, sorry. Because I just take that mm. ayah anyway to be like a little dig at Christ, to be fair, because Muhammad knew or Jibril knew, somebody knew that Christ is carrying the burdens of others. So, so if we can go to the next slide. Um... We'll, we'll, we'll kind of address people, yeah, topic uh, questions a bit later on as well. So, so um, this is a uh, one Rob might be able to help us with. Okay, so I think it's slide number. Uh, I think it's the following slide, right? Let me close. This. Okay, cool. So, sorry, family. Eighty-five. Cool. So here we see another blunder in the Quran. So maybe Dalili is going to, you know, uh, this is a contradiction. So it says, indeed, Allah and his angels, and this is the Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Ghali translation, who was a big scholar at Al-Azhar University. He puts, indeed, Allah and his angels shower prayers 
Yesaloon upon the Prophet, O you who believe, pray for him and submit on full submission. So here this. Yeah, maybe this, you want me to read the Arabic too, bro? Is it, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. In Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So <laughs> the word is yusalluna, right? Yusalluna. When I say, ana usalli, yusalli, uh, ana usalli, I am praying. So when Allah is praying, to who is Allah praying? I mean, when I pray, I pray to my God. So when Allah prays, to who does Allah pray? Does he pray to himself? Does Allah pray to another God? Or does Allah pray to Muhammad? And we understand, let's say, let, we go, let us go with the Muslims. Let us say Allah is blessing. It does not say that, but let us be politically correct for a second. We understand if you say that it's blessing. So Allah bless, okay. But it says Allah and the angels are doing the blessing. Since when do angels bless people, guys? Isn't the blessing always coming from God? Ah, here we have a disaster. So do you see? It's nothing but praying. It has always been praying. Go ahead, my friends. Yeah, uh, JC, can we get the next slide? Well, Yaya actually tells us very, very helpfully. Um, unfortunately, he lost his temper with you, Rob. But he since told us that, yes, Allah does pray. And it, who does he pray to? He prays to Muhammad and the believers. So I think Yaya's wrapped that one up for the rest of... Uh, Exactly. Like we saw yeah. the clown Muhammad Hijab confirm that Allah prays not he prays for the prophet, <laughs> not no to the prophet. The prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but guys, <laughs> good that you <laughs> mentioned that by and the way, they were clapped as well. Everybody yeah. cheered. All the but <laughs> here comes the problem. Here comes the problem, guys. You know when he said it, he actually spoke himself. Yeah. When he said mm. Allah does uh, pray for, not to. Wait, mm -hmm. it does not say pray for or to. It says Allah on. So he said to David, I'm going to teach you Arabic lessons. I know I'm, I am going to uh, teach you Arabic lessons, but wait, Mr. Arab expert. It does not say mm -hmm. for. It says Allah on the prophet. So you but see, as we know, he's actually, actually a Hebrew expert. expert. Yeah, and he's a Hebrew expert. Elijah means God with us. <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> so this guy claims to know Arabic, but at the same time he does not know Arabic and he wants to teach David Wood Arabic lessons, but this guy himself does not know Arabic. Um, Can you imagine? Yeah. It's not for, it's not to, it's on. <laughs> and, and what happens is Muslims wow. lie and they, try and, play, and they yeah. try and lie and say it means blessing. Now if we go to the next slide. Okay. Mm. So this is an extract from the Muhammad Messenger of Allah from uh, Qadi Iyad, and he lived in the 11th century. Now, in his book, he put, the commentators and the etymologists disagree regarding the words of Allah. Allah and his angels pray blessing on the prophet about whether the word pray refers to both Allah and the angels or not. Some of them allow it so to refer to both, while others forbid it, forbid it because of the idea of partnership. They make the pronoun refer to the angels alone and understand the ayah as Allah prays and his angels pray. He goes on to say, Allah makes the merit of his prophet clear by first praying blessing on him himself and then the prayer of the angels and then by commanding his slaves to pray blessing and peace on him as well. Uh, and also he goes on, uh, I haven't got it in the slide, he then confirms that it is praying because he said Al Muhammad made a distinction in an, in an, in an, in another hadith um, where he said uh, blessing, I think, is barakah and um, praying, which is uh, what, what's the word, um, Rob? Yeah, you, uh, Allah should have said if Allah was so-called God of Islam and he's not yeah, God yeah. of confusion as he claims to be because he said we send the Quran uh, a very detailed explanation, right? But Allah, if he should, if he didn't want to cause this mass confusion, he should have said in Allah wa malaikatu yubarikuna because baraka is the is the word right mm -hmm. but the verb is you bariku you bariku so but here comes another problem if allah would have said allah and his angels you barikuna we still have a disaster why because since when do angels bless 
the blessing should always come from God. How can angels bless anyone? Right? Yeah, they can bring it from God. They can give news mm -hmm. of a blessing. So, yeah, so either way, so either way, Muhammad busted Allah when he fabricated this ayah. Either way. Exactly. If, so, and, and, and with this with this from Qadi Yad, obviously this is the 11th century. This is way before even, you know, Christians brought this up, Muhammad Hijab. And he's saying <laughs> the etymologists were arguing of the original meaning of the word where the commentators, they knew Muhammad got himself busted. So therefore they had to reinterpret the word because they know. They had to lie. And this is why he has highlighted the disagreement between them because the etymologists know the roots of the word and what they mean whereas the commentators they want to fabricate everything everything is a lie to try and get people to come to islam so we even see in islamic literature they're big scholars and those who don't know kadi ayyad he's a big scholar he's got a university named after him so he's very very well respected within the islamic community yeah uh, paper boy, uh, let us let us make it even more worse for the Muslims. Here and here is why: when Muslims pray, right? When Muslims pray five times a day, when they pray, part of their prayer is, and let me say the Arabic first and translate it, "Ayyuhal Nabiyu," right? So they are addressing, "Ya Ayyuhal Nabiyu," right? "Ya Ayyuhal." So they are actually talking directly to Muhammad, right? They are talking directly to Muhammad when they pray. Wait a second, Muhammad is dead. He is dead and somewhere rotting in Medina, buried in Medina somewhere, right? How are you calling Muhammad not God of Islam, but you are praying to someone who is dead? How is Muhammad not God? When you pray, should you not only pray to Allah? Why are you praying to Muhammad? Salamu alayka, ya ayyuhal nabi, right? Salamu alayka, do you hear it? Assalamu alaikum, ya Nabi. So that means they are actually talking directly to Muhammad. Peace be upon you, Muhammad. When they pray, peace be upon you. Did you catch it? That's yeah. what they say when they pray. It seems like there's so many blunders. They they just don't, uh, you know. Seems almost as if it's made up. I'm just saying. Because that would be necromancy. Yeah, exactly. Praying to Muhammad. I mean, when we pray to Jesus, we understand why Christians pay, pray to Jesus because he's our God, right? He's he's the only he's uh, intercessor. Living. Exactly. He's the uh, he's the only intercessor, right? So we it, uh, when we pray uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. That means we pray to the Father and the Holy Spirit too, right? Because he is he is our God. intercessor. But in Islam. How can you pray to a dead man? You know, the Quran says that Muhammad is nothing but a mere warner. He is a warner. So why are you Muslims pray to Muhammad, the dead Muhammad, who is not even alive at the moment? Only Isa in Islam is, is so-called with Allah, right? So why yeah, but are you hang on a minute. To Muhammad? I had, but no, but hang I, on I, a minute. I, I heard, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, I heard that the, the, the context of this is because if the angels are praying to Muhammad, then how much... No, sorry. If the angels and Allah is actually praying for Muhammad, how much, how much more you should pray to Muhammad, which is obviously directly to the Muslims. So I think that's the context behind this... this, 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 this uh, you know, you see, it's Lisa, not, it, forget about the ayah. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about chapter 33, ayah 56. I'm talking about the, the, this very important fact. When Muslims mm -hmm. pray, when they start to pray five times a day, they talk directly to Muhammad. They say, peace be upon mm -hmm. you, Muhammad. In the present tense hey, you as well. So they are talking directly to Muhammad while praying. And that's the disaster right there. Did you catch to the, other, Muslims, the other thing to, to, just, Muslims, the other yes, thing to mention is that if Isa is merely a prophet, if he is a human only, why is he immortal until the day of, like when he comes back to kill all the little piggies? What have the pigs ever done? Like, <laughs> and smash up some wood. <laughs> like, why is he the, still alive if he's mortal and yet he's immortal? Let's not forget the cross but as is, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the pieces of wood, yeah. But he is. Um, the word of Allah also, and the Holy Spirit is thrown in there. It's not Jibril because Jibril did not breathe Jibril into Mary or Maryam. Like, I, if you find one contradiction, one error, 
then obviously you have to reject the rest of it because, like we said previously, like you must reject anything that contradicts the Quran. And if the Quran does it itself, you have to just throw the whole stuff out. Like, I don't know how many, I don't know how many times Takia or like Miss guided a fear of being killed as an apostate. I don't know what it is, but I don't know how many times sincere truth seeking Muslims will be able to like combat these kind of errors, which we can literally, I've done it on YouTube. You can find one ayah and you can spend half an hour just gently pulling it apart, but you can't do it with the Bible because every part of that scripture is God breathed. And they're like, I don't see the parallel. I don't see how it can be comparable. I don't see it at all. But I'm willing to, you know, for someone to explain it. Yeah. You know, let's say Rob Christian, uh, uh, guys, Rob Christian maybe is lying or something. We can also prove from the Quran, from chapter 48, maybe if you can show it on the screen, uh, JC, chapter 48 of the Quran, ayah 9. Chapter 48, ayah 9. Surat al fatih chapter 48, ayah 9. Uh, let me read the Arabic, if that's okay with you guys. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا It says, it, let me translate it, it says that you may believe in Allah and the Rasul and to assist him, meaning assisting him in battle, who? The Rasul, because Muhammad was the one who was doing the wars. And you have to honor or respect him. And the last verb, you have to glorify him every morning and evening. What? Oh my God. You have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening according to chapter 48, ayah 9? Wow! That's shirk. That's blasphemy. Yes. Now, Muslims, Muslims who are going to say the, the last verb, to glorify him, it goes back to Allah. No, no, you can't play all these games with me. I am an Arabic native speaker. I went to school. They taught me the last mentioned person in a sentence, in an Arabic sentence, the last mentioned, mentioned person in a sentence, all the verbs, all the words that come back, go uh, come after the last person, go back to the last person. Who is that last person? Is the Rasul. Again, you have to believe in Allah and the Rasul, and you have to assist him in battle. You have to honor and respect him, and you have to glorify him every morning and evening. If that's not blasphemy, if that's not worship of Muhammad, then I don't know what worship means. Well, exactly. Solid, solid, solid points there, uh, Rob. I do hope that somebody can. I challenge, yeah, I challenge side. any Muslim to, to come and refute me on this. Chapter 48, I 9. Clear blasphemy, clear shirk that every Muslim, every morning and evening, he must glorify Muhammad. You see how important wow. it is to, to know actually Arabic, to refute the, this blasphemy, this evil man made cult made by Muhammad for Muhammad to be worshipped by the Muslims. Do we have any Muslims that have uh, any, you know, any reports? Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Uh, the only, we have one answer. We have only one answer. It's uh, one, one of the Muslims. He calls himself Jesus. Jesus was an atom too. Rob Christian, you are not lying. You are just a child. Is that what, is that anything you have? Is that it? Is that it? Well, that, wow. I don't want to be you, man. Voice. I don't want to be you. <laughs> It's no. nice to sound like you're young anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Take it as a compliment, Rob. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was 16 again. There was a, a comment by um, Del Lee. Uh, JC, I posted the link for Caddy Iyad's book, uh, the online version in the chat. If you just put copy that into the main chat, he can go and have a look and see that his own scholars have confirmed that it is prey. Yeah, okay, me... Maybe Jesus was an atom too. I know here, you yeah, know, you Muslims. You that. Yeah, no, if you post, post that, that's the book. If you post the link in the in the chat, so people can okay. actually, yeah, have a have a look at it. Yeah, maybe uh, this Muslim can help us out. Maybe you can come uh, live on air here and refute where and, and say where Rob Christian lied, right? Maybe you can refute me, Muslim. Well, yes, so we do hope that somebody can jump in. Absolutely. It's been silent all week, and this should take note. You see, when we put Islam under the microscope, no Muslim is willing to.
jump on board. If this was a topic about the Bible, I'm sure we would have every uh, speaker's corner person, every Muslim wanting to jump on. But when it comes to defending Islam, mm. the first lines are silent. <laughs> silent, <laughs> silent. No answer, no answer. Family from the Dawah team, what's happening, yeah. Muslims? Come on now. Paper boy, <laughs> you never heard about chapter 48, uh, IA 9 before? That this is no. clear blasphemy. Yeah, yeah, you know, because if no, you go to it's go to any translation, they do taqiyya. My friend, Muhammad is the last mentioned person in any language. If you have a, I think even in English, the last person, according to Arabic grammar rules, when you have two persons, in this case, Allah and Muhammad, all the verbs, all the words that come after the last person go back to that last person. And how can we actually understand? Because it says assist assist him that's the first verb assist him uh, muslims when you're going to say it goes back to allah when you lie and you say this goes back to allah does allah need assistance in battle from muslims no allah does not because he's god right so as you see the first verb already explains it away the first verb explains that this goes back to the last person who is that last person it's muhammad it's the rasul so assist him in battle Honor and respect him and glorify him every morning and evening. Outrageous. If Muslims want to comment, if you do make your case now, jump on the panel and give your refutation. If not, we will continue to the next slide. And remember, guys, remember to hit the like button. And also remember, remember to subscribe to Rob Christian's channel if you already haven't. He's doing great things in dismantling Islam. Thank you. I appreciate it, my friend. Oh, you no. can nip over to mine as well. Thanks, paper boy. And K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah. Guys, don't forget about K. I mean, come on. Doing yeah. semi great we work. We don't want her to become sad. Come on, guys. Help her out too. She's a very good sister. <laughs> yeah, we love you, K. Oh, don't worry. We love Thank you. Thank you, darling. Big up this K. Big up this K. And make sure the family has subscribed to, to her channel. It's called <laughs> Say so, uh, K Soccer Films. Excellent. So, um, there's a question again by Jesus was a Nathan too. Uh, who who would like to answer this but, question? But this doesn't have anything to do with the topic. What does does the word salat mean mercy? No, because uh mercy in Arabic is rahma. How did rahma, how did mercy, rahma? become salat which means prayers <laughs> it always meant praying praying salat you salli baraka blessing rahma mercy you see if allah mm -hmm. claims to be god and he claims that his quran is the the perfect explained book why is he causing this mass confusion that we need many later scholars right 200 years 300 years 400 years later scholars like uh, Al-Qurtubi, like uh, Ibn Kathir, who was actually, Ibn Kathir was born in Andalusia, in Spain. Why do we not need, uh, you know, uh, later people, later guys, mortal guys like you and me, to explain what Allah did not explain, right? That's a disaster. Well, that's it. And as the Quran says, uh, Rob, which is quite strange that the Christians and the Jews made the monks and the rabbis their their laws. But it seems like now... Yeah, the chapter 9, 31, right? That's the besides one you... Besides who, though, yeah. paper boy? Now, besides now who? Besides Allah and Muslims. Isa. Yeah. yeah, the Muslims have now made their scholars their lords. Ibn Tamir, Ibn Kafir. So Yeah, exactly. Allah has refuted these people for doing this thing, but then the Muslim community is doing the very same thing Allah accused the Christians and the Jews of doing. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is when you uh, when you go to chapter 9, I 31, that you just mentioned, Paperboy, uh, that's a very good uh, one, actually. Why? Because if you go to any uh, translation, they are going to tap dance and they need to correct Allah. Because Allah says in his... Arabic Quran, Do you hear it? Allah wa al Masih. Allah wa al Masih. It does not say uh, something else. It clearly says Allah and the Messiah. So, uh, how can we translate it? They have taken their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah 
and the Messiah. So who are the real gods? Allah and the Messiah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Even the Quran Amen. must proclaim that Al Masih, the Messiah, is God. By the way, nine, by the way if you use certain search en engines for Arabic translation, which I do sometimes, I sent Rob a private message and I wanted to say the uh, peace of Christ be with you. And he messaged me back saying, don't, don't call him Allah. And I said, I didn't. And then I realized that even like Google recognizes Jesus as God because I put in Jesus and it came back the Arabic word for God. So that was quite, uh, quite heartening actually. Yeah. Actually, we don't need the Quran, right? We don't need the Quran to prove that Jesus is Lord. We can throw away the Quran away. But since Muslims have to obey what the Quran says, we can use the Quran to show that even the Quran, we don't need it, right? But even the Quran proclaims that Al Masih and Allah are equal. Mm, cool. It. Guys, who would like to answer Islam is the truth? Um, the question that appears on the screen. Oh, sorry, I was off looking somewhere else. One second. So he said, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, He's of Allah, not God, as in Surah 5, yeah. 116. Oh, please, uh, let me do this one. Let was, me do this one, please. Yeah, that's, please. The, <laughs> that's the worst <laughs> ayah that you can go to as a Muslim. The most worst oh, ayah. Hold, hold on. on. Rob, Rob, hold if on, you look at the on, infancy gospels, wow, the, infancy, yeah, go the infancy gospels, have Christ speaking from the cradle, uh, yeah, speaking from the cradle, saying, I am surely the Son of God. And amazingly, not through Jibreel, as Yahya attests himself, Yahya says, Yes, there is plagiarism in the Quran, therefore, I'm saying it can't be divine revelation. But then, a very similar, almost exact copy, even plagiarism detection software at, at universities would pick it up all of a sudden. <laughs> Christ is in the cradle, and now he's saying, I am merely a prophet, I am only a so-and-so. Like, basically, um, I don't take the word, if it's a Quran reference telling me that Christ said this, I completely disregard it, because Christ is one of the most well-recorded figures in history, along with Abraham, along with the major uh, figures in the Bible. All of his words were attested to, all of his words had eyewitnesses to them, they were faithfully documented. They have been deconstructed and poured over by atheists, Muslims, Christians for centuries and centuries. And we don't find any of the contradictory basic nonsense that we find with a clear and concise Quran that needs a whole horde of tafsirs and scholars arguing amongst themselves, changing their minds, sahi gradation, then it's Hassan, then whatever. So basically, if the Quran tells me that Jesus said, Oh, but I breathed life into this bird by the permission of Allah. Or actually, Allah says, do you remember when? Because that's a good narrative to uh, insert information when Muhammad needed it. He, he, he only says he does it by the permission, not by the power. So therefore, Christ is a creator. Allah says he is the best of creators, implying that he is not the only creator. Whereas we know from John 1, that Christ alone, or through or by Christ, all things were created. Nothing was created that wasn't created through or by him. So anything that contradicts my Bible, I am happy to dismiss it as fantasy. Like I don't mind where it comes from, which religious scripture, the mouth of which scholar. If it contradicts my Jesus, this Isa character, I'm sorry, that, that he's not the guy. Like he's surely not the guy. Yeah, okay, uh, you know, like I said, uh, chapter 5, ayah 116 is the worst ayah to go to. Why? Here's why. Because if we go to the ayah, it says the following. Allah needs to ask Isa, Allah needs to ask Isa, as if Allah is not all-knowing, he needs to ask Isa. Did you say to the people, take <laughs> me and my mother, Mary, as two gods beside Allah? So this proves two times. Not, not once, but twice, that Allah is not all-knowing. Allah needs to ask Isa, point number one. Point number two, Allah is not all-knowing. He does not know that the Christians do not worship Allah. We worship Jehovah, right? Jehovah. Yes. And we worship <laughs> the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, we worship not the Mary. Father, the Son. We, we don't worship Mary as two gods. So, and here, it actually proves 
that we don't worship two gods or three gods because it's talking about Allah, God number one, uh, Mary, God number two, and Isa, God number three. And what have you done with the Holy Spirit? What have you done with the Holy Spirit? Why are you adding Mary into the mix? Do you see the problem? So chapter 5, I 116 is the worst, the worst ayah that you can go to. To make it even more worse for this person who mentioned chapter 5, I 116, if we go to chapter 4, I 171, I 171, Isa is not just a mere messenger. We don't have a problem with the word a messenger, right? A messenger. Because to make it even more worse, according to chapter 4, I 187, Isa is much more than a messenger. He is the word of Allah and yes. he is the spirit of Allah. Wow. Here we have a, a triune God in Islam. He is the messenger. He is the word of God and he is the spirit of God. Seems that Jesus is not just a simple mere being in Islam. And we show chapter 9 and 31 that al Messiah Jesus is equal to Allah. Keep making it Thank easy for us. Hadouken. Hadouken. Well, very easy. But very we'll easy. Go, yeah, we'll go into the next slide. Uh, Jesus was an atom. If you want to answer to that, to that, just even click on the link for um, Kadi Iyad's book. He goes into it because he explains the hadith where there's a different differentiation between the words. So if you have any dispute, dispute with your scholar, um, it's the information's in that book. So we don't need to um, actually go into that one. That's answer there. Jesus was an atom too. Cool. So we're going to go to the next slide, paper boy, if you don't mind, paper yeah. boy. So, cool. so let's, yeah, uh, as we said, we don't worship um, oh, Allah, we worship Jehovah. So even this is something the Jews at the time of Muhammad realized. So if we see the Quranic verse, it says, so it says, they did not hold Allah in due esteem when they said Allah has not sent down anything to any human being. Say who has sent down the book brought by Musa as a light and a guidance for people which you keep in various sheets, some which you disclose and a lot which you conceal, and by which you were taught what you did not know. Neither you nor your fathers say Allah, then leave them to play with whatever they indulge in. So if we go to the next slide, uh, we'll go to the tafsir of, uh, I believe it's Maldudi. We go to the next slide, JC. So in the tafsir, we see it says, the context in which the words Allah has not sent down anything to any man occur in occur and their refutation clearly show that these were the words of the Jew. They uttered these words when the disbelievers and the Mishrakeen of Arabia asked them, tell us what the word of Allah has really been sent down to this man, Muhammad. The question had arisen because the Holy Prophet claimed, I am a prophet and the book is being sent down to me. The Quraysh and the Mishrik Arabs turned to the Jews because they possessed the book and believed in the prophet and could speak with authority. Therefore, their answer provided the opportunity with a strong weapon against Islam and they repeated the answer as an argument to dissuade the people from it. That is why their answer has been cited here and refuted. Here, is, here a possible doubt should be removed. How can a Jew who believes in the, that the Torah has been sent down by, by God say Allah has not sent down anything to any man? A little thinking will show that a person in his obduracity often utters such things as are against his fundamental pr principles. So basically here we're seeing they've asked about Muhammad and the Jews didn't say Allah has not sent down anything to Muhammad. They refuted the concept of Allah at all because they said Allah has not sent down anything to anyone, not even Musa. So here the Jews are clearly rejecting Allah as a God because this is why, and I've underlined it, it says a little thinking will show that this person in his obduracity often utters such things as are against the fundamental prin principles because he says 
here is a possible doubt should also be removed. How can a Jew who believes that the Torah has been sent down by God say Allah has not sent down anything to any man? So he's they're ref clearly refuting the whole concept of Allah. So when Jews, when Muslims say, oh, Jews believe in Allah, no, they don't. We even see within your tafsirs, they refuted the concept that Allah has given any revelation. They know Jehovah has given revelation to the previous pro prophets, but not Allah. So, any, wanna, anything, uh, Rob, do you want to add anything to that? No, my friend, keep continue what you're doing. This yeah. is amazing stuff, bro. Continue. So we'll go to uh, the next slide, which proves Allah is not a god. So here we see Allah is the protector of the Kaaba. So it says, seest thou not how thy Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant? He did not take make their treacherous plan go astray, and he sent against them flights of birds, striking with them stones of bait clay, then he did make them like an empty field of stalks and straw. So here is the uh, the surah where it talks about. Um, actually, if we go to the next slide, it, uh, we'll, we'll no, go just, to the. Can we add something before we go to the next one? If that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, paperboy. This is very interesting uh, chapter. Actually, it's very small chapter, but this explains how Allah cannot. Uh, Keep his promises. Allah promised, right? Whenever someone comes to attack Mecca, especially the Kaaba, he will send a army, an army of birds. Uh, with you know, imagine these are tiny birds with <laughs> with, with, <laughs> with small uh, stones. Now, now here, this is talking about an army of elephant, the companions of the elephant. Now, Mecca, we know Mecca is a very, very hot place. It's a middle of a desert. What I mean, if you bring there one elephant, do you know how ma many liters, how many gallons of water just one elephant needs? What about an entire army of elephants? I mean, Hannibal took a wrong turn. Is that what just, you're Google, just Google, <laughs> just Google and see one elephant just how much water he needs. Not only for drinking, an elephant has very dry skin. An elephant will die if he does not put water gallons and liters of water on its body it will die because uh, the the skin is so thick uh, an elephant cannot sweat so he, he needs water to uh, to cool himself down so what about an entire mm -hmm. yes do we stick with the birds then I, I vote for the birds yeah and the birds yeah. what about the yeah. birds what about the birds there's there were right. there were enemies of muslims Al Qaramita, maybe you heard of them. Al Qaramita, the Karamatians. Sorry if I'm butchering the English translation. The Qaramat, Qaramita attacked the Kaaba, and uh, the leader of, of the Qaramita, he destroyed the Kaaba, right? I With thought Allah was going to send all the elephants. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's the army. What, what, where are the army of birds? Is that a different right? day? Maybe he got mixed up in his diary. Maybe, maybe Allah was asleep. Maybe Allah was tired. Who knows? But wow. uh, the leader of the Qaramita, he went on, on top of the Kaaba, he pissed on the Kaaba, and he challenged Allah, Allah, if you're there, destroy what me. What be upon him? <laughs> he what? He peed on the Kaaba. <laughs> what be he upon took, him? He took the black stones with him. He broke the black stones into pieces, right? Because the black stone was a huge, big rock, right? They came, it's a meteor that came from heaven. It was like a... I thought Abraham of, built it. What? Hey, just Didn't a second. Let me finish this. This is really sorry, sorry. Yeah. So this was uh, the, the rock was is as big as a big football, right? A soccer game, right? Football. Mm. So he broke the, the this rock into small tiny pieces. Even if you go now to Mecca, you will see only a couple of tiny pieces, right? So he broke it, and and more than ninety percent of the stone are gone. Where is Allah? Why is he not sending down his army uh, of birds to protect the Kaaba and the black stones? Where is Allah when you need him? Mm. He can't mm. enter in. So, I mean, he, he might be busy shooting the stars at Jinn. As mm. meteors. I mean, it's a full-time job coming down to listen to the prayers of the believers in the nighttime because yeah. it's nighttime somewhere all the time. So he must be just up and down, up and down. Like, it's hard work being out Yeah, there, and I, I mean, let's say Allah is patient. 
But is he patient for 20 years? The Karamita stole the black stones for 20 years. And they, they lost the majority of the part of the rock of the black stone. This is why it's called black stone and the black stones in the first place. It's, it was a one big in, uh, rock, right? Maybe Abraham didn't have planning permission. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it does it's, flood it's, a lot it's there, amazing, doesn't it? Amazing. Like it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a poor like place to put it. I know I think it was in Petra to start with. Maybe they should have stuck with the original. <laughs> yeah. This is this okay. is really damaging. Maybe damaging. he wanted to get the sun. I don't, yeah. Okay, I don't. yeah, this yeah, actually tricky. proves over and over and over that Allah is a fake dead God who cannot keep his promises. But let's oh, not forget yeah. also that the Kaaba is going to grow a tongue at the end of time and a mouth to mm. start grassing up Jews. Like I mean, I don't know. Or to identify who is a true Muslim. But obviously not the true Muslims who are in London, just the ones who are round about the Kaaba at the time. So you can point them out with is no hand. I don't know. Yeah, I've gone off on a tangent. Sorry, paperboy. <laughs> if we go to the next slide. So it's basically just covering again what uh, Rob was basically saying. So if we go to the next slide, um, just to give a more detail about this same story. Um, JC? Next slide. And just in terms of Dale Lee's comment, Targum Jews had no problem with Allah as God tafsir rasag, Genesis 1 2, and the earth was deeply submerged in the darkness, and Allah's wind would blow on the surface. So, a lot of, you know, we always see Muslims say, well, you, they go to the Arabic Bible and it says the word Allah. So, I will challenge any Muslim to go to Exodus 3 14 and see if the name Allah was revealed to Moses. With that if you're able to read Arabic, um, I mean, they'll leave. Is it Arabic? Sorry, is that Exodus three fourteen? Yeah, in the yeah. Arabic, and whether Allah was the know. name of Moses when uh, Moses spoke to God. So if we go to the next slide, Jay Z. So we're just almost done. So again, just to reiterate uh, the story from the Tafsir Al Tafsari. Uh, as Rob was saying, basically there was an attack on the Kaaba and there was a flight of birds and they predict, they proceeded to pelt them with the stones that infect their skin with smallpox. If we go to the next slide, and it just give a bit more detail about the attack on the Kaaba. So in 930, Abu Tahir Kamati led the Kamatians' most notorious attack on the Mecca, unable to gain entry to the city Abu Tahir called upon the right of all Muslims to enter the city and gave his oath as he came in peace. Once inside the walls, the 700 horsemen of the Kamatian army massacred around 30,000 pilgrims on the first day of Hajj, taunting them with verses of the Quran as they did so, whilst al Kamati shouted, I am God and God is in me. Where is God? I am your great God. Where are the birds of God? that protect the Kaaba, where are the stones of fire? But clearly Allah had gone on holiday. So the pill- <laughs> Allah was Allah. taking a shower, brother. <laughs> exactly. M maybe he was washing his shin or maybe his- <laughs> His curly hair or his hen toes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it says the pilgrims prayed to Allah instead of defending themselves, hoping that Allah would intervene as he had promised to protect the Kaaba according to the Quran. They looted the Kaaba, destroyed the buildings, plundered houses, seized slaves, and threw the dead bodies of pilgrims into the well of Zamzan, Zamzam, whilst other dead bodies were left on the street to rot. Abu Tahir took the black stone and held it in his possession. He took Where did he go? I think people were... Um... Paperboy well, finished paper like Allah. Got... What happened to Paperboy? Oh, we don't know. Jibril yeah. might have nipped in just to give him a quick update. <laughs> yeah. We I need, think, uh, think, we need to ask Jibril... Allah. Yeah, I, we need to ask Allah I actually think... to pray to bring him back, man. Mm. Allah needs yeah, to pray. I, I, yeah, I think Jibril <laughs> shook him a little bit, but let, 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 him, <laughs> let him bring him back. <laughs> let him bring him back. On. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the Agua dates that were missing <laughs> from your diet. Okay. Oh, yeah, if you go to the next slide.
So again, we asked, where was Allah's protection? Uh, so Abu Tahir Janabi ridiculed the belief in Muhammad and Islam, saying, in this world, three individuals have corrupted mankind, a shepherd, a physician, and a camel driver. And the camel driver was the worst pickpocket and the worst prestigator of the three. So he rejected the attempts of the Abbasids and the Fatimids to return the Black Stone, which the Khamatians held for 21 years. The Abbasids even tried to pay a ransom for its return to no avail. It was only due to the orders of the Fatimid Shia Caliph al-Mansur, whose authority they accepted, did the Khamatians return their black stone by throwing it into the great mosque in Kufa, which broke it into seven pieces. So if Allah was telling the truth about the Kaaba's protection, shouldn't this story have been avoided? Because clearly those birds had disappeared. Where were they? The person directly challenged Allah and Allah was nowhere to be seen. So clearly Allah is a fabrication because according to the Quran, there should have been some uh, stealth birds, you know, those F F-16 bombers launching yeah. their hands onto the heads of the Karmatians. Uh, so if we go to the next slide. We're next almost... slide. <clears throat> Let's go. Points um, to conceal. Please. Yeah. So... The points to consider is in the Battle of the Elephant, how come there has not been any archaeological findings of Ethiopian, of the Ethiopian army's presence, such as elephant bones being found in Mecca if the birds killed them? Are there any Ethiopian records of this battle? Because it seems like it's only in Islamic history. Are there any Jewish or Christian attestations to the sacred black stone in Arabia that was linked to Abraham? Because... Muslims seem to think that Abraham built uh, the Kaaba. So why is it no Christians or Jew were aware of this for several thousands of years? We ask ourselves, is it a coincidence that Muslims venerate a black stone when the pre-Islamic Arabians were called stone worshippers by multiple sources, a practice still carried on today and forbidden in Judaism and Christianity? So we must logically ask ourselves, how would it Arab pagans know what is the criteria for determining a true prophet. According to Islamic sources, Khadija was able to verify an angel by removing part of her clothing, but according to which Christian or Jewish tradition, as there is no Christian or Jewish tradition that confirms such a methodology. So if we go to our concluding slide. <clears throat> cool. So, looking at the PB cat test, which we start off with, it seems Muhammad failed on numerous occasions. So, ask yourself objectively: Does the evidence seem consistent with the behaviour of someone who was getting divine revelation, or do his actions strike you as being consistent with the behaviour you would expect from someone who was an imposter? So. Of all the fantastical stories that are not in the Bible, how many have outside attestation or have archaeological evidence to support it? Uh, then we ask ourselves, do, does Muhammad provide detailed revelations as we would expect from someone recounting a true event? Why did we go from having a Bible with details of names, places and timelines to a Quran with zero details. Why is Saudi Arabia, for example, devoid of any pre-Islamic archaeological historicity? So we know one of the telling one of the telling signs of a false prophet is someone who comes with self-serving revelations, and we see this numerous times in the Bible. Prophets being punished because they did something against God's will. God's will. Yeah. Not that they did something and then God says, why do you conceal what is permissible? The fact is that Muhammad tried to conceal things because he knew it was wrong in his conscious and used his get out, of jail card, get out of jail card, which was Allah. So the problems with Muslims is because they are so focused on the Trinity, they overlook the traits of what makes someone an actual prophet. So with Muhammad, unlike the rest of the prophets, Allah gave him privileges beyond his peers, 
a concept which has been preached against for hundreds of years before Muhammad. So if we go to the next slide, just a few extra points. We must ask ourselves, why is it the Bible and true historical events both have in common high verifiable historical claims, but the Quran and fables both have low verifiable claims. Some of the unsolved mysteries regarding the Quran for one to ponder are, where is the giant wall where the people of Gog and Magog are? Because there's a story where Dulkarnain built a giant wall, iron wall between two mountains and there were people, these people of Gog and Magog stuck behind them. Yeah, paper boy. Uh, by the way, sorry if, that I'm interrupting about the Gog and Magog. I watched uh, uh, Yasser Qadi. Uh, you know Yasser Qadi, right? Yeah. He mentioned he mentioned in his video about the Gog and Magog. Do you do you know that he and his followers actually believe that Gog and Magog are zombies? I kid you not. They are really? zombies. Yeah, they are zombies. Uh, co uh, you know, caught behind a huge wall. Zombies. Can you imagine zombies? Anyway. Well, that's it. And the Islamic literature says for every Muslim, there's 999 people of the people of Gog and Magog. So if there's 1.6 million Muslims now, that means there must be almost 1 trillion people somewhere on this planet stuck on a stuck behind an iron wall. So can we imagine there's uh, almost 8 billion people in this world that we've counted. But according to the Quran, there's a further one trillion people that we have not yet located, which would probably take the size of America to house all these people. But yet, you know, Muslims seem to believe in these fables. So again, we ask, for example, who saw the moon split? Who are the people that live by the black muddy pool where the sun sets? Why are there no pre-Islamic Arabic texts that confirm the Quran, Quranic version of the fables that Jews and Christians reject as historical. Abraham built the Kaaba, Kaaba. How come no pagan Arab in that region had any biblical names, mainly Abraham, Ishmael, or Hagar, as religious people usually name their children after well-known prophets or culturally significant people? And we must ask ourselves, if the Hajj was such a big event, how come no local region ever mentioned it in their historical texts even non-biblical historical evidence supports supports various evidence events in the Old Testament. Yeah. So um, also, also <coughs> how come no one there. noticed Abraham uh, nipping cool. out and recorded it? Cool. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good question. Um, I think paperboy gone is gone is frozen for a, for a second, but I'm gonna allow Simon. Come on, Simon. Bless you, bro. Good to see you in the live chat. Uh, how are you? How so, are you, Simon? Um, yeah, good. Good stream, by the way, to have people to the chance to interact with you. So I'm gonna present the source that I think is relevant. So in the chats, you will see it like one, two, three. So at least three. Um, three sources or three uh, links um do you mind sharing um yeah by all means by all, yeah okay let me let me click on yeah. mm, uh, okay so i tell you what uh, uh simon can you please put it on the live on the sorry on the, in the back chat yeah on the back chat so so i can copy and paste it i think well you can share my screen to put it um, on the screen. you can share my screen Right. I mean, you. Uh, is that possible? Do you see the chat, Simon, at the back? Not the live. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies for for this. Oop, what's going on? Um, just Tabari. Let me get everybody else on board. Sure. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay, this is Tabari, volume nine. Um, so Tabari is like one of the greatest tafsir or like historical writers of Islam. So I posted the chat. Uh, you can get the link here. And just so you know that like um, I or uh, someone else is not making stuff up, you go to page 
69, and then you have Tabari writing the following. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Yeah, let me just get everything going. Yeah, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. So this, this is Tabari summing up what Muhammad basically saying that we are the helpers of God and advisors and his messenger with Muhammad and we fight the people until they believe in God. Can we just stop there? Yeah. We fight There's them a until... story that confirms that. Right. We fight them until they agree with us. Is that very like ISIS? Until they believe in Allah. So when when they believe in God, they always believe in, believe in Allah. So that's right. So that's right. we are fighting to essentially what until, I want to say from this is that you have you fight until you convert people to Islam, basically. That's right. Yeah, it's the jizya verse. It's fight those who believe not in Allah, and then it goes on to say fight that's until right. there are no more unbelievers. But it doesn't stop there, it, ju it just continues that. Um, and he who believes in God, his messenger, has protected his life, meaning that if you're a Muslim, that you have a special privilege, I guess, because privilege. you agree with Islam. But it continues that his life and his possessions are free from us, and those who disbelieve will fight him forever. Can you guys explain what forever means? All time. Right. All time continuously. Right. In the cause of God and killing him as a small matter for us. So, one more time for those who missed it, it's found in Abari, volume 9, page 69. Here it is. One more time. Um, can I share one more uh, source? Please. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Yeah. Okay. Here's one more source. Uh, here you have. The Sira is just another name for biography of Muhammad. Um, Simon, my friend, can I add to what you said before please you continue? Do. Is that okay? Yeah, please do. Yeah, okay. If we go to uh, to the Hadith, Muhammad says the following: "Amrtu an aqatil al nas hatta yushhadu in la Allah la ilaha illallah wa anni Rasul Allah wa yaqumu salat wa yatu juzia." Did you hear it? So Muhammad said, the messenger of Allah said, I've been commanded to fight to people until they testify to la ilaha illallah, right? And I and that I am the messenger of Allah and establish regular prayers and pay zakat. So, uh, sorry, the word, the last word wasn't, wasn't uh, jizya, it was zakat, sorry. So every Muslim, so every person on earth must become a Muslim. He must convert to Islam. Else your blood, your wealth and your women are not protected from muhammad and his army of thugs there you have but allah says but allah says that he will make christians superior until the day of resurrection so unless the last christian is to die on judgment day like which kind of negates that until there are none left he tells Sister, that, it's but, abrogated. Oh, <laughs> listen, Allah's perfect. His words can't be bested, apart from when he tells Muhammad, don't worry, son, if you forget any ayah of this clear and concise book that I'm giving you, I'll bring you a 2.0. I'll bring you a better one from some random in the street. But, you know, the real so, last of it. So, Sorry, uh, Simon. There's a lot of comedy going on right near, uh, here, and it's, it's just summing up the... The, the lunacies of Islam. So, yeah, imagine if you actually take Muhammad seriously. You believe that Allah is the God of, of the world, and you th think that Muhammad, um, who is the, the, the last messenger. Um, here I have the, the, the biography of Muhammad. If you go to page number 602, so I'll post the link if you guys want it in the chat. Uh, okay, here's in chat. Here. Can we read this together? It's yeah. poetry written by Muhammad's companions. Um, who devote their lives to the Prophet on the day of hand-to-hand -hand fighting and cavalry attacks? They purify themselves with the blood of the infidels and could consider um, that an act of piety. Can you purify himself with the blood of infidels? Wow. Uh, bro, so you kill infidels, so you kill yeah. infidels to end your rewards because you're acting justly, yeah. basically. 
and they dare and they dare to say why did the father you know did that to the son yeah why did he send his son to to die right but here we see that the muslims want to purify themselves shower themselves with the blood of infidels wow exactly yeah so um a summary of this would be that that we are seeing uh, like a tsunami of ex-muslims that are running out from this cult and that is very encouraging yeah. and and the enemy of islam is information i would say um anybody want to comment on that i think that's brilliant I, I really do get completely edified when i hear even if they don't want to go public even if they don't want to tell their family necessarily because we know that there are threats of violence and all of those things attached i think that those who god calls will be drawn like they will come to him and um yeah it's inevitable that they will ex they will come to accept christ and i think that's a glorious and wonderful thing and i think that because we don't know who god calls we need to keep preaching the word to muslims with love and i say respect for the person not for the the sometimes disgusting things that we have to look into in order to disprove a fact that's so easily disprovable that that Muhammad was the best example for mankind it only takes one time of him being less than the best to disprove the whole the whole pre like concept so yeah i find it uh very satisfying that muslims are seeing the truth even if they become atheists is one step on the road to you know to their eventual salvation excellent thank you thank you sis no cool. hey boy, what should we do? Yeah, so I think there's just a handful of slides left. Uh, it'll be a good continuation from what um, the key watch was presented in terms of the ethics of Muhammad. So if we go to uh, the next slide. Ah, hey, buddy. Cool. So <clears throat> now we've kind of, kind of concluded our look at uh, analysis of Muhammad's behavior. So we kind of now look towards the scripture. So, you know, for many Muslims, it's a case of say one, not three. But for Muslim, that's all that matters. But the problem is they don't look beyond that and look at the qualities of Muhammad as a prophet, what makes him a prophet. Because we know the Bible is a true guidance and when it came to prophets 600 years before Muhammad it would say in the book of Peter it says these false teachers are like springs that have no water they are like clouds that are blown by a storm a place in the deepest darkness has been kept for them they boast with words that mean nothing they lead people into the trap of sin they find people who have just escaped from a wrong way of life and lead them back into sin they do this by using evil things people want to do in their human weakness. These false teachers promise those people freedom, but they themselves are not free. They are slaves to a mind that has been ruined by sin. Yes, people are slaves to anything that controls them. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, Jews and Christians re rejected Muhammad and the pagans followed him because they had no criteria and he appealed to their carnal mind. So if you go to the next slide, because we'll just look at the differences between the teaching of Christ and that of Muhammad. Cool. So for example, Jesus says, then he called to the crowd to him with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me for the gospel will have it now if we go to the next slide we go to Matawa to Malik but then Muhammad comes with a different message he says Yahya related to me from Malik from Abu Huraira that the messenger of Allah said Allah guarantees either the garden or a safe return to his home with whatever he has obtained of a reward or, or booty. For the one who does jihad in his way, if it is solely jihad and trust in his promise, that brings him out of his house. So we see two, contradic two contrasting messages. One, Christ is saying, 
to be his follower, you must be prepared to give up everything. You know, whereas Mohammed, he sounds like a car boot salesman. You know, follow me, you will either get the garden or you will get the reward of booty from jihad. Where which one would be tougher to follow? Christ, who says you must be prepared to give up everything, or Muhammad, who's saying if you follow him, there's rewards in it. So if we go to the next slide, because Muslims like to say uh, Jesus was just like Muhammad, but we saw that Jesus taught against appealing to one of the biggest human weaknesses, which is sexual desire, whereas Muhammad appealed to and taught to indulge in it. And this is why Christ said, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now, if we go to the next slide. Muhammad, on the other hand, he said in the book of Tamidi, the believer shall be given in paradise such and such strength in intercourse. It was said, O messenger of Allah, <laughs> And he will be able to do that. He said he will be given the strength of a hundred. So Muslims, if you say you believe in Jesus, why did Jesus not say heaven was like the Playboy Mansion where you will have endless intercourse and the strength and a of a mile high erect penis? Just chucking it out <laughs> there. An endless penis and the Huris whose legs you can see through and you can see the bones. <laughs> don't forget the thousands yeah. of young boys like pearls who don't bleed. Exactly. Okay. So when Muslim when Muslims say you know, Jesus and Muhammad came with the same message, just give those they, they give them those two two verses. Totally contradictory. Jesus says they'll be marrying where Muhammad says it's the Playboy Mansion. So <laughs> we go to the next slide. Oh gosh. Pois to consider. Yeah. yeah, so again, the Bible before Muhammad came teaches us to distinguish between true and false prophets because in the book of Timothy it says, For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And this is why this scripture cannot be corrupted because. Otherwise, there will be no criteria for determining who is the truth or, for, or false prophet. And we see here, it says, the te they will get teachers who suit them, their own desires. But we see in the hadith where the, where the companions had gone to war and they were saying to Muhammad, we feel, should we castrate ourselves because their wives were still at home? And then we got the verse of Muta. Temporary, where, temporary marriage where you can even give a woman your garment for some, you know, quick time passion. Now compare that to what Christ was said, you know. He said one woman to one man, but Muhammad is coming with a message, you know, have as many sex lays, what your right hand possesses, muta, all these sort of things. So how can we say these two people have the same ethic? And this is why we call Muslims to wake up and open their eyes. Who actually shows true discipleship, true discipline, you know. Perfection. It's an ethical behaviour, you know. It's quite clear they did not come with the same message. And it's very clear they were not in this, were, they did not uh, follow this same God because one is saying all these different things in contradiction to what Christ has said. Mm. But for they focus on three, say God is one, but they forget about all the other things that qualifies someone as a prophet. But paper so, boy, you, you forgot a very important ayah, my friend. Chapter 78, ayah 33. And the uh, big swelling breasts for every hori that you will get, she will have me melon-sized breasts, brother, not second. <laughs> Very important, man. Oh, Don't forget God. that, man. Those exactly. poor horries are going to be looked over because they're having an A cup. Oh, so, what are we talking? D and above? Like, I mean, double what G. Why about trauma? Swelling breast. Exactly. Breast. Exactly. If you said in Arabic, I mean, you've won, clearly, already. I mean, it must be true. Exactly. And if we just go to the final slide, uh, this was a quick syllogism which I which was put together. Okay. 
Next slide. Hmm. So basically a syllogism is a type of logical reasoning where the conclusion is gotten from two linked premises. For example, an apple is a fruit, all fruit is good, therefore an apple apples are good. So then, you know, people can download this. We'll put up the link later on um, and they can have a look at it. So basically it determines how, why the Bible cannot be corrupted because if we look, if the Bible gets corrupted, then there is no criteria for determining who is a true or false prophet, for example. So then if, because Muslims claim the Bible is corrupted. So if the Bible was corrupted before the time of Muhammad, that means they have no way of determining what qualifies someone as a true or false prophet. So therefore the Bible has to not be corrupted. And if the Bible is not corrupted, it still proves Muhammad is a false prophet. So I advise people, we'll put, that, put up the link, have a look at that. And when you, you know, speak to Muslims, just use that logical reasoning to them. Um, and on that note, that was the last slide of the presentation. So I hope everyone's learned a lot. Boom, um, as they say. <clears throat> everyone for who jumped on the panel. I don't know if there's any other people who have questions or want to kind of jump in with their thoughts. And maybe uh, there are Muslims who can call us liars and jump in to refute us. Well, this is it. Four days and we only had one Muslim. Yes. But when we see uh, the, only one, yes. the Muslims put on challenges, Christians are calling in left, right and centre. But it shows you that Muslims cannot defend their religion. You know, they can comment in the comments, but they, they're not brave enough to step up to the plate and defend their religions. So we invite I all think... Muslims to reconsider and leave this false religion and come to the true God of yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, you know Paperboy, um, right. we mentioned uh, the, er the earlier ayah, chapter 33, ayah 50, where Muhammad, yeah. one of his uh, privileges is if Muhammad lays his eyes on a married woman, a Muslim married woman, uh, her husband must immediately divorce her and give her to Muhammad so Muhammad can do nikah to her. Mm. I once asked when I used to debate uh, on Paul talk in the back in the old days where Christian Prince used to debate Sam Shamoun, etc, etc. I once debated a Muslim and I asked him this very question. If Muhammad would have been alive today and he would look upon your married woman, your, your own wife, would you divorce her and give her to Muhammad? You know what he said? Guess what he said? Of course. That's what he said. Yes. Have they been married a while though? So there you go. <laughs> I mean, Muhammad, Muhammad is special, man. Muhammad is special. He's a very special man, Muhammad. And is his privilege and all his desires to be by 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 Allah um, I don't Muslims that would like to jump on jump on the live chat I can see, I see Lee once again just making okay what's, what he's saying right now so he's saying the following uh soccer films like the genitals <laughs> like donkeys the gentiles like donkeys and similar like horses in Sveta and Sons of Solomon and wishing he was her brother in so and speaking about her flowers. Whoa. Okay, so I think he wants to um He prefers to talk about that rather than talking about a fifty three year old man sleeping with an eight year old child, stealing other people's wives, uh running around uh, condoning uh, the murder of a, a Jew by strangulation. He said no blood money was required. He'd prefer to talk about uh, maybe Allah coming in a shape that they will recognize because they've seen him before with the hen toes and the curly hair. He'd rather talk about donkey genitals, which says something about his mental health, rather than reading the text in its entirety in Song of Solomon and Kings and to look at the context of what is being said, to whom it is being said and what it actually means. So I would pray for that person, Dale, like I really would pray that God would move his heart to stop attacking Christianity, which Allah revealed anyway. Allah created Christianity by causing this big deception on the cross. Allah revealed the Torah 
and the Injil and the Psalms. And if you're going to say they were corrupted, how come Allah can't just protect his own word? Why does the Quran say it's a miracle? And yet it also says Muhammad will bring nothing other than a warning. Uh, he won't, won't bring any miracles. Allah tells him to tell the people, if you want miracles, you better check in the Bible because I've done that. Um, that's old hat to me. I'm just coming to you with warnings. Now. So, Dale, with respect, either grow up a little bit or go and read some like porn if you're just looking for genitals. I don't know. Bro, would you like to make uh, any comments on over. this? Sorry. <laughs> But it was, was also funny as uh, this case that remember back in the day when um, uh, Ahmed, the late Ahmedidat was also yeah. making these type of comments with Songs mm. of Solomon. And then mm. when they realized that Mohammed was actually found in Songs of, or Songs of Solomon, they, he well, they completely changed it. his mind about pornography. Mm. So, it's, so amazing. It's, it's amazing exactly. for me. JC, when we defend Christ, we mm. defend the truth with a capital T. There's no need for tequila. There's no need for embarrassment. We just need to read the text. Often it's just a couple of sentences before or after whatever the Muslim, like, you know, logical fallacy is that's coming at the Bible. What, whereas Muslims are required to lie in order to protect Islam. Why do you need to lie to defend the truth? It doesn't make any sense because then you negate the truth by having to lie for it. If you can't stand proud upon your prophet, a mere warner, uh, a false prophet potentially, if you look at Luke 16, then how do you stand the embarrassment of it? If I was a passionate Muslim, I know that I would defend it with all like, you know, like if I felt the same way for Islam as I feel for Christ, I would defend it up right up until the last moment. But I would feel massive amounts of embarrassment and I would do my darndest to avoid the Quran, to stay out of the ayah and the hadith even and just attack the Bible, which my God, Allah, has already told me he in part revealed. So I have to attack Allah in order to defend Allah. It doesn't make I'm sorry. I'd like it if it made sense, just so I could refute it rationally, rather than like I don't get where this is coming from. Like I realise there's a spiritual Stockholm syndrome. You're identifying with a man who was less than perfect, who Allah Himself says, "I will forgive you, Muhammad, for your past, present, and future sins," indicating that He will sin again. How is the best example for mankind sinning on a daily? How is that possible when Christ is righteous and Isa is a pure child in Surah 19? And I'm going to stop ranting. Someone stop me. Uh, and, and Kai, um, some, uh, I think GC asked me to add uh, also my uh, point of view. Uh, I think today was a really a blessing of a show and it was an honor to be with you guys again. Thank you for having us. Uh, may, God, may, may God bless the audience, bless our body in Christ, body of Christ. Um, I want to add something to what GC said. You know, Ahmad Idad, he mentioned a uh, song of, of songs, right? Song of Solomon 516. Solomon. Yeah. So when Ahmad Idad mentioned uh, that Muhammad, he said that Muhammad, Mahmadim is, uh, you know, that's Muhammad. Here, Ahmad Idad actually called Muhammad and Allah liars because we mentioned that earlier, chapter 7, ayah 157 states, that if Muslims, you know, if you want to find Muhammad, you have to go to the gospel and the Torah. Now, is the song of Solomon inside the Torah? Is it inside the Injil? No, it's not part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So here, Ahmad Idad actually called Allah and Muhammad, uh, and Muhammad liars and deceivers. When you go to other sources, then, then the Torah and the Injil. So actually, this proves that Ahmad Idad was nothing but a deceiver and a liar. On top of that, the word Mahmadim is mentioned in many places in uh, the Bible. If we go, for example, to Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, 66, and also in Ezekiel, the same word Mahmadim is mentioned. In Isaiah, it's talking about that uh, uh, if, if we're going to say that that's Muhammad, then Muhammad will be destroyed if we go by the word Mahmadim. And if we go to Ezekiel, then, uh, and we see the, the word Mahmadim, that means Ezekiel's wife, and you, if you say that's Muhammad, then Ezekiel uh, must be in love with Muhammad. So you, you see, because the word sounds like Muhammad, Mahmadim, it must, it must be Muhammad. By that logic, uh, the word Akbar uh, is a, a cursed mouse. So if you're going to say, to go by that, that means Allahu Akbar, Allah is a, the accursed mouse. 
Well done, Ahmed Idar. Well done. Oh, you got we, you killed, you got cursed mice. I mean, what's going on? Why aren't the RSPCA involved? I don't know what's happening. Well, let's let's not forget the the monkeys getting stoned for committing adultery as well. Or um, the Jews being turned into monkeys and pigs. I mean, that was a good one. <laughs> Excellent family. I mean, um, cool. I think we covered two hours and 20 minutes of, of uh, this presentation. Um, Paypal, what we like to, well, we want to give a, a wrap up on your presentation. Um, I, I, yeah, just basically, yeah, like give a, give a conclusion as to what you like to watch, what you were looking to achieve by presenting this to, to, to everybody. Uh, well, the main crux of this is Islam is false, Jesus is Lord. And, you know, we just wanted to take an approach that people use their critical thinking to look at what the Quran says. If it's a book of history, it should have historical claims, things that we can certify because we know fabricators cannot fabricate history. That's why when you look at things like archaeology, you know, things that have happened in the past, they, they're always going to be there. And that's why when, like, for example, historians look at the Bible and try to research things and claims about people, cities and whatnot, they always find things. But then with uh, Islam, we find nothing. And that's what we would expect if something was made up. You know, if I read Harry Potter's book, I'm not going to mm. find the place named in Harry Potter's book because it's invented. And mm. this is why questions like, where are the people of Gog and Magog? Muslims are scratching their heads. Well, the Quran is true, but apparently there's one trillion people somewhere hidden on earth. It's not logical. We Maybe see they're on a lockdown. Sorry. Well, well, exactly. You know, there's so many historical claims that the Quran makes, and all we can find is fables that they are linked to. So, you know, we live in an internet age where people have the ability to research things. You know, so watch over the presentations, have a look for yourself, and you'll come to the, the decision that Islam is false. You know, don't think, oh, the Quran is true, therefore we can't find things. And, you know, it's it, it's not logical. You know, if you make historical claims, you should be able to have archaeological evidence. And as I started this presentation, I said, the Quran claimed there was 124,000 prophets sent around the world, but yet we cannot find one book of these people. It seems highly odd. So, you know, some people be in their way, but those sincere people who are taking in this information will kind of, it will lead you to the truth that Islam is false. Thank you, Dave. Thank you uh, for that, people. Um, CSK, any, any final words? And then we go to Rob. Yeah, I was I was supposed to pass the mic to to the Sheikh, but uh, it would appear that he's he's offline. But yeah, yeah it's a bad connection. Final, yeah, final commentary, Kay, and then Rob yeah, Bob, and then I'd, I will, I will I'd like that. to like sincerely thank Paperboy for all of the time that he put into this. I know he's been like fitting it in with his work and his other schedule commitments and stuff. So thank you very much, JC. You need an actual medal. I'm going to find you one. But all of the stuff you do behind the scenes, all of the times that you're there with like answers to questions and supporting uh, Christians around and about. Um, Rob as well, obviously you're a blessing uh, with the Arabic. Um, so I guess I'd just like to say to any Muslims who listen to this in the future or are listening now, without the bravado, without the uh, like the community element of Islam, in the privacy of your own room, like if you're so sure of yourself, just do this one thing with a repentant heart. Ask God to show you the truth. You don't need to fear the truth. The truth is the truth and it can't be changed by Takiya or by Christians talking you into it. No Christian will be able to talk you into it, but the Holy Spirit will be able to come to you if you see the truth of Christ. And if you do, I promise you will not regret it. You you can't regret this, the feeling that you have when the Holy Spirit is in you because it is just, I don't know that I could explain it to someone who doesn't know about it, but I 
I can promise that I've had times in my life when I haven't had it and it is infinitely better than having to scramble around trying to defend a guy who by today's standards, Adnan Rashid admits, is a paedophile. So um, God bless you, Muslims, but repent. Turn from your Thank sins you. before it's too late because you don't know how long you've got. Nobody does. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, this guy. Um, cool. Um, I don't know if Sheikh... If it's important in the queue. Uh, Sheikh, would you like to say some final words before we leave? And then I'll pass the mic to Rob, and then I'll give my goodbyes to everybody. Sheikh, any final words on this presentation, this series? Yeah, thank you. Uh, God bless you all. I'll be quick about it. I was in the chat, uh, on the chat, and I was reading someone saying, uh, about Salat, that uh, brother Rob Christian is wrong about it, and I was told to come and teach him his own language. Well, I tell them that uh, brother Rob is an Arab himself, and he don't need any help with his Arabic, but I'm going to go uh, answer that uh, person. Uh, salat comes from uh, the word, uh, the root word Sila. Sila means connection, okay? Now, the argument of the Muslims are, is that blessing is a connection to so therefore salat is a blessing i tell them salat is connection mausul is connected mutawasil means non-stop tawasul means connecting awsal means either common points or joints of the body so if that all coming from the same word connection can i be the joint or the knee of god when i pray or can i be uh, non-stop when i pray it doesn't mean that salat is a is a special word dedicated only to the divine when you connect to the to the divine which is god that's about salat and uh, brother rob was a hundred percent uh, right about what he said. Uh, one more quick thing. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like uh, that person to use the word Isa instead of uh, Jesus in his nickname because uh, Jesus is Yasua in Arabic and Isa must have another translation in English. Something like Isa or anything. Thank you for Thank that. You. Good Thank you for that, Brother Sheikh. Thank you for that, Brother Shakespeare. Uh, thank you for those words. Rob, any final yeah. comments on this series, please? Well, the brother Shakespeare, thank you for uh, confirming that we are actually not lying. Uh, because if we are lying, that means we are nothing but hypocrites. Uh, uh, how can we claim to be, uh, you know, uh, seekers of truth or followers of the truth? And who is the truth? Jesus himself, when he said, I am the way, the truth and life. So... Uh, and, you know, and, and let's say, you know, we are humans. Me, everyone, he can make mistakes. In the end, we're all hypocrites. We're all sinners. We can make mistakes. But when we, when we lie, please, Muslims, we are here. We're not hiding. Come and correct us. Refute us. We are alive on air. Why are you not stepping up? Where is Mimi Hijab? Where is Ali Dawa? Where are the, these people? Right? We have been, uh, you, you guys, you, you are running an amazing live show for at least two hours. Where are the Muslim heroes? All right? So, again, guys, thank you so much for this. Uh, God bless your ministry. God bless you and your loved ones. God bless the audience. Keep supporting us, guys. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers. And, um, yeah, as long God can give us uh, guidance and uh, health, we will continue doing what we do. And uh, thank you for your amazing support, guys. Uh, blessings. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Amen. Boom. Thank you for that. Thank you um, for that, uh, Rob Bob. Yeah, Payboy. Can we just something? go to slide 70? Uh, I just see slide. the comment, Islam is the truth. Slide 70. Well, it's not that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, let, let me get a comment first so we can give some context to this slide. So it, Islam is the truth, you said, right? Uh, yeah, 1223. It... Guys, the Quran is the word of God, not word of Muhammad. Peace be upon him. If you don't believe me, it's your choice. But remember, you will stand in front of Almighty Allah on the day of judgment. What's your excuse? So let's just quickly go okay. to 
my things. excuse is I've wandered into the wrong room if Allah's there on Judgment Day. That's my excuse. All right, cool. So what slide? Uh, uh, 70. Slide 70, cool. Let's go to slide number 70. Uh, okay. Copy and paste. So, okay. In answer to Islam is the truth, we see the hadith. My Lord agreed with me in three things. Once the wives of the Prophet made a united front against the Prophet, and I said to them, it may be if he, the Prophet, divorced you, all that the Lord Allah will give him instead of you wives better than you. So this verse, the same as I had said, was revealed. So Islam is the truth. According to Umar, the Quran also contains the words of Umar. So how do you rectify that? It's not just the words of Allah. It's the words of Umar, and if we just go to the next slide, uh, next one. Here we see Abdul Ibn Sa'ah, who says, uh, who used to write the revelation for the Prophet and God. He later apostatized and joined the pagans. The reason given by the commentators is when the verse 23 12 was revealed the prophet called him and dictated it to him and when the prophet reached the end of 2314 thereafter we produce him as another creature abdullah said in amazement so blessed be the god the best of creators the prophet said and thus it was revealed to me which made abdullah doubt and say if muhammad is truthful then i received the revelation and if he lied say of the like of his speech so he apostatized so clearly islam is the truth you do not know what you're talking about because the quran contains the words of umar abdullah ibn sar and everyone else muhammad copied off and this paper, is in your Islamic yeah. literature paper boy can i add to the, to this very important story about abdullah ibn abi sarh yeah uh, i i rewatched the part where you were discussing this very important topic with uh, that Muhammad, actually the guy, I actually, I rewatched the video and everything he said was nothing but deception and lies, especially on this one. You know, maybe if you remember what he said and you can, you yourself, you can replay that video of yesterday, you will see that he said, and he lied. He said that Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, when he was a scribe of Muhammad, he was not a Muslim at that very moment. He lied. Yeah. Ibn Abi Sarh was a Muslim when he was being a scribe, when he said, Tabarakallahu ahsan al khalaqin. And Muhammad said, yes, write it down, write it down, because that's the way how Jibril gave it to me. So he lied, even he lied about Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh when he was a Muslim when he was writing the ayah down for Muhammad. You see how these Muslims are liars and deceived? Shame, shame mm. on them. Shame on them. <coughs> wow. Exactly. Uh, cool. But we know we know Muslim apologists have no shame, no honor and dignity if, you, if they are defending Muhammad, who claims to be a prophet and a, a pedophile at the same time. Thank well, you. Thank you for that, uh, Rob. And yeah, uh, obviously we would, we would love to have the Muslim Sam, uh, come and, and refute this point. So just find the words. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you all for, for joining the live chat. Thank yep. you, family. Yep. In the line, um, in the yeah, I'd like to thank Rob that, as well. Arabic came in very useful and very handy. handy. Oh, always um, big yeah. up, big up, big up, bro. Uh, thank you, bro. Guys, remember to, sub to subscribe okay. to Christian uh, K Soko Film, show them the support, um, and let's support the family. Mm. Let's support the Thanks, family. Let's grow the yeah. let's let's grow the family and to Muslims and non non Christians. I mean, you know. Um, from this series what we're trying to show you guys it's quite it's very clear it's it's it's, it's to show you that muhammad peace be upon him cannot be in line with the biblical prophets you know and i hope the evidence that was provided today will influence you into do more research about your traditions of course read the bible as well and i really do hope that the holy spirit can guide you and open your eyes your heart to see that the best example to follow is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And um, I do hope that uh, you realize that to, to, um, to the sincere Muslims that are watching, uh, that have been watching this series for, for these past few days. Uh, so with that in mind, thank you everyone. Thank you admins. Thank you everyone for joining the live chat. Thank you to all the super chats. Uh, I do apologize if I didn't um, post your questions on screen. Um, um, maybe next time and yep 
hopefully I'll see you on the next live stream, family. So thank you all. Take care of yourselves and your Peace family. God Stay safe. You. Peace and blessings of our risen Lord be with each and every one of you. God bless amen. you. Amen. Amen. God bless. Take amen. care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.